Hey y'all, Melissa here with you today with another little project that could be for Easter or it could just be a gift for a friend. We're going to be sewing up these little scrappy knit bunnies and this is a great way to use up knit scraps but of course you don't have to use knit fabric to do this. In fact, you don't even have to use a sewing machine. If you would like to hand stitch this, you can whip stitch it the whole way around and it will work just as well as using the machine. So let's see how to make them. Here are the supplies you're going to need. There is a free pattern on my site to make these bunnies and I've got the link to the blog post below with all the details about how to get that. And then you're going to need to have fabric to cut it out of. Now, I like to use knit fabric for this. One reason is because I often have small knit scraps and there are not a lot of things you can do with small knit scraps. It's not like you can make a quilt out of them easily. So this is a great project for that. You don't have to use knit fabric though. You can use woven fabric. However, if you're using woven fabric, you're gonna to wanna to put fray check or something on the edges of the ears so that they don't fray. With knit fabric, this isn't necessary because knit fabric is just not going to fray. So the first thing we want to do um, is take the fronts and the backs and place them right sides together. Okay, so here's the back piece and I've got it right sides together. Let me double check. Yep, front is right sides together. And I'm going to sew down these edges here. Okay. What I want to do though on the back, there you see these notches? That's where I'm gonna end up stuffing this rabbit. So I want to leave in between the notches unstitched. Otherwise, I will sew down these back lines and right there onto the feet. Because I am using a knit fabric, I am going to be using a very slight stretch stitch I've got my machine set to a zigzag stitch that is one millimeter wide and two and a half millimeters long, and I'm using quarter inch seams to stitch. Okay, here I have stitched the front. Let me do the back. Once I have those stitched, and I want to emphasize, don't stitch this little bitty wedge right here. That's gonna be the space in between the bunny's legs. So once I have the front and the back stitched, I want to go ahead and open up the front, and we're going to go ahead and put on the face now while the bunny is flat. So there are lots of ways you can do this. You could sew on buttons, you could embroider, you could add like fabric and then applique it on. I'm literally just gonna use a Sharpie to draw mine on. And take into account who this is being made for when you choose your face method. For example, if you're making something for a small baby who might put things in their mouth, you don't want to use something that could come off and be a choking hazard, like a button. So I like to make sure the nose is kind of on the furthest out point of the head, and then just decide from there where you want to put the eyes, or you can even save the eyes for last, which is what I actually think I'm going to do in this case, because I can't really tell without it being stuffed to make sure that the eyes will be even. The next step is to take the ears and you'll notice if you're using knit fabric and it stretches that it has a tendency to curl in a particular fashion. So if your fabric um, has a curl to it, you want to work with the curl on this step. But basically you want to take the two edges, fold them in on the bottom here so that they touch. All right, and that is gonna give the ear just a little bit of shape. Then, pin this onto the front of the bunny. And there is 
On the pattern, this little guideline where to pin the ear. Okay, so I actually want to move this up so that I can get it in the same place that the pattern indicates. And you, of course, can transfer these marks before you take the pattern away from the fabric if you'd like. Oh, you know what? I'm pinning these wrong. You want these face down like that. And just go ahead and temporarily pin those in place. Okay, once you have the ears pinned in place, then you can take the back, put it right sides together with the front, and we're going to stitch all around the whole bunny, everywhere except the feet. So I know the feet are kind of funky looking here. It will make sense later. Make sure you match up those seam allowances. And make sure that you don't catch the ears in any seams other than at the top. All right, we are going to stitch inside the legs here and then around the arms and the rest of the body. We're going to leave these two foot areas open. Once you have sewn all around the edges of the bunny, then we need to complete it by sewing the feet. So you're going to pinch your foot like this and open up your seam allowances. And then stitch right across the foot of the bunny. this and of course repeat that on the other foot. When your bunny feet are both sewn then you can go in through the gap in the back to turn this right side out. You may want to clip into like the corners of your stitching here to help when you turn this right side out so that it is fully turned. Make sure you do not clip through your stitching line. bunny is starting to take shape now it's time to stuff it so I use polyfill stuffing and just fill it up At this point, I'm going to go ahead and draw on the eyes as well. And you can even add a little bunny mouth if you want. I think I'll put in just a little bit more stuffing in the head and in the belly. And then the final step to finish up your bunny is going to be to use a ladder stitch to sew this opening closed. 
I'm not actually going to show that on this video because I have a whole video just on how to sew a ladder stitch. So I will link to that below. And once you get that done, then you have your little bunny all finished.